Hi hey folks, and welcome to our Valheim Ghost Protocol series. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be playing Valheim in ghost mode. I'm not a big fan of combat. I don't particularly care for combat in games, and particularly in games like this, what I'm really interested in exploring is the uh, is the tech tree and ex exploring the land and doing all that sort of stuff and I just find it annoying to have to be fighting things all the time when you're trying to like you know build yourself a, a furnace or something like that so um, I'm going to be setting it to ghost mode which means that um, aggressive creatures don't notice me uh, I can still take damage from things like trees can fall on me and I can hurt myself and, and stuff like that. I don't know if I can die from that kind of damage or not though, but we'll, we'll find out perhaps. To play Valheim in ghost mode, you need to start it up with the console option. So if you're playing from Steam, you go to your Steam library, right click on Valheim, this little menu pops up, click on properties, and if you look down at last property, it's launch options. So you put dash console in there. All right, so let's get in here. Now, this is a character I've been playing called Yob. I'm not going to use him uh, because one of the interesting features of Elheim is that if you you can use the same character in multiple worlds, and if you do, he carries whatever's in his inventory with him into the new world. So I'm going to uh, start up a new uh, a new character here. And we'll call him, whoops, yeah, Gorm, sure, didn't mean to have two R's, but two R's is better. Hello, Gorm, um, I don't want him to be hairless. Braided. Uh, I hate ponytails. Uh, he should have a beard. There we go. Good enough for me. All right, Gorm. Let's come in here. Um, I'm gonna start a new world. We will call it. Surprise, surprise. Oh, come on. My uh, my computer here is just barely able to keep up it's uh not the uh, not the mightiest computer for doing this sort of thing but we should be able to get by on it yeah so i've got some of the graphics turned down so don't be too dismayed if you find the graphics are really awful i mean even with everything turned up they're not the greatest graphics you'll have ever seen in the game but they're not as bad as you see them here if you have a decent card which i don't so this game is in early access but it's, uh, it's very playable, the way it is. Basically, there's just... Mostly, it seems like they have to add more content. Um, there's lots of content already there to keep us going for quite a while. But before they can... I guess before they can release it, there's more stuff that they want to add. Uh, the other thing that's a bit incomplete from my viewpoint is that some of their UI choices are... Well, they need work. And we'll get into that as we go along. But I do enjoy playing it, despite all that. Okay, what we got here? Long ago, the All-Father Odin united the worlds. He threw down his foes and cast them into the Tenth World, then split the boughs that held their prison to the World Tree and left it to drift unanchored, a place of exile. For centuries, this world slumbered uneasily, but it did not die. As glacial ages passed, kingdoms rose and fell out of sight of the gods. When Odin heard his enemies were growing once again in strength, he looked to Midgard and sent his Valkyries to scour the battlefields for the greatest of their warriors. Dead to the world, they would be born again in Valheim. All right. That's my dramatic reading. And there's two of these birds. I don't know if you always get the same one. I think Murin... I'll have to wait until he drops us off and we can see. But anyway, we're actually flying over Valheim. As you can occasionally see little bits of it down there, but he'll eventually land and let us go.
be interesting to pop up the world map because I think you'll act, we'll actually be able to see the path that the bird brought us in on, on the world map. Bam. All right, Hail Warrior. Let's go over and talk to the bird. Who is it? Hoogan. Oh, that's right. So E, that's something you got to get used to in here. E, use the E button in a lot of places where in other games you would think to use, you know, just click. So let's talk to Hoogan. Welcome to the 10th World Warrior. I am Hoogan, sent here to guide you in your travels. The megaliths surrounding you are the sacrificial stones. They represent the forsaken, which you must slay in order to ascend to Valhalla. Uh, okay. Well, thanks for all that. Oh, now he wants us to come over here and talk to him. This stone is Vegfizzer. <laughs> veggie. I'm just going to call him Veggie. This stone is a Veggie. These magical stones were scattered throughout the lands by Odin as signposts pointing toward the ritual grounds of the Forsaken. If inspected closer, this one will reveal the summoning place of Eichthir, your first prey. He is a mighty beast, so you need to properly arm yourself before even attempting to defeat him. Okay. Now, before we go any further here, I want to go into the settings. Oh, no. What I want to do is bring up the console, which is F5, and enable dev commands. Okay. And then turn on ghost. And now I'm not going to get attacked by stuff. Alrighty. So let's run around and pick some stuff up here. Look, we can pick up a stick. Our first item. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of those messages popping up right at the start. Is this a stone that we can pick up? No, is this a stone we can... Yeah, there's a stone we can pick up. Okay. So you do E to pick things up. You do have a bit of a magnetic radius around you, like in a lot of games, but it's not that big. And it's not uncommon for things, like when you kill things. In fact, we can do an experiment here. Um, well, actually, there's too many things I need to say all at once. Okay, so we've got a... Uh, where are we here? Settings? No, that's not what I want. There we go. Tab key brings this up. So we have these skills and this list is, as we unlock them, there's going to be more and more of them. And you go up in skills, obviously, by using them. So let's see if I can do, if I jump here. Now, if I bring up the skills again, I've got a jumping skill. It's up to one. Woohoo! All right, so the first thing I want to do is... Oh, Hoogan wants to talk again. Yes, big bird, what do you want? Take stock of your inventory. Most items must be crafted. However, due to your recent departure from Midgard, you will have to recall the true shape of objects. Just pick things up and it will all come back to you, I'm sure. My lesser brother, Moonen, tells me one can fashion a stone axe out of wood and stone. Yes. Um, I should note, I've only... I've, I've played this for a few hours, like, I don't know, maybe 30 hours or some odd, but I haven't, I've only gone as far as defeating the first of the Forsaken. I uh, haven't gotten any of the rest. All right, so we want to build something here. Let's see if I can remember how to do that. Craft, stone axe, what do we need? We need four stone and a wood. Okay. And what do we actually have on us? We have three stone and four woods. So we need one more of each. Oh, let's go. Let's jump our way around so we can improve our jumping skill. There we go. That's that little halo. That means you just improved on a skill. Here's another stick. Okay. And I need a stone. Oh, there's water over here. Let's bound to be stones down by the water. Oh, here's something else. I forgot about these. So here's some, these are raspberries. So these are 
going to be the first food that we can get. Uh, there will also be mushrooms around. Oh, and speaking of speaking of which, here's some right here. Uh, he wants to talk again. A tasty morsel. You have found a snack. Consume it to improve your health and stamina. Be aware that before long you will grow hungry again. So try to always have it at, have at least a couple of different meals ready. Yeah, we'll talk more about that in a minute. There's uh, the game has kind of an odd way of dealing with food and hunger. Okay, there's nothing else in the backs of these stones. Okay, let's go down to the water. Let's see what's there. Jumping Jehoshaphat. I think there's a stone here. Yes. Pick it up. Okay, so now we should have enough to make that axe with. Tab key brings up. Yes, we can make stone axe. So we craft it. Oh, we are mighty now. Um, I like my axes to be in three. So since we have the stone axe and there was a boar around here somewhere. Do, 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 unsuspecting little boar. Ooh, I'm going to have to turn up the sound a bit. That was just a little bit too quiet. Audio. Let's turn up the effects volume a little bit. The problem, the reason I have it down so low is mostly because rain and windstorms can be pretty darn loud. Pretty hard to hear yourself think. Okay, so if you got something in hand, you can have a, like a weapon in one hand and maybe a shield in the other. If I th think it's the R key, uh, the R key will kind of just stow them, and then if you press the R key again, it'll immediately bring them back out. The other way you can do it is you can, uh, if you look in the upper left here, that's where my hot bar is. Easier to see them right now. So you have a hot bar that can have eight items in it, and you can address those using the number keys. So what, whatever number you press, that's the item that will end up in your hand. So I've got a torch there, so in one. So if I press one, I'll be holding a torch. And if I press it again, then it'll put it away. So if I wanted to completely put the axe away, I'd press three, and I could take it out again with three. But if I want to quickly like stow and bring it back, then that's what the R key is for. So. And let's do that, since I don't need an axe right now. Let's go down here and see what there is to be had. Uh, there, we've got some flint. We can make better tools out of flint. Than just with stone alone. Okay. Do, do, do. Ooh, more flint. Pick up a bunch of stuff and then we'll go running around looking for some structures. There are oh there's lots of flint down here. Just if I go too deep, I'll start swimming. <laughs> Which is not a problem. I mean, I need to learn to swim at some point anyway, but that's not what I want to be doing right now. So there are lots of, uh, like, old rundown structures and ruins in here and crypts and things like that. Um, so we can get a really good head start on building stuff. Is this a stone that I can pick up? Yes, it is. Okay, good. We can get a really good head start on building our... Uh, our home, if we can find one of those, it's in pretty decent condition. So, oh, another oh, that's a deer. Okay, the only reason the deer isn't running away from me is because I'm in ghost mode. So, it didn't know I was there until it died. And Actually, really, even after it died, it didn't know I was there. 
All right, since we have this, the axe in hand, let's uh, chop this up for some wood. And more stone. Pick up some dandelions here, but I've never used them for anything yet. You can make, eventually make potions and other recipes and that. But I never got to anything that I needed dandelions for. Oh, another boar. Right now, the most important thing we're getting from the boar are scraps of leather. There's lots of stuff we're going to want to build that'll need scraps of leather. So you see they do that little explosion? That's when they release their... Uh, uh, their resources. So I got meat and leather. Now, if you watch this, if you watch in the upper right, sorry, upper left, underneath my hot bar, when I kill them, well, actually anything I pick up will appear there. So it says added raw meat. But you'll see outside of this bloody zone, there's this uh, little bit of leather scraps that flew all the way out there. So it's generally a good idea when you kill something. Well, I'm already here. Walk into the middle of the blast to improve your chances of picking up everything that's there. Because especially at night, you might not even notice that that there's something that you uh, failed to pick up. What is it telling me? Okay. I thought I already picked that one up. Alright. So what do we have here? That's not nearly enough wood, but we'll get there eventually. Oh, I guess I'll point out a few things in here. So there's the leather scraps. Or sorry, this is the deer deer hide. These are the leather scraps here. We've got four of them. The meat that we collected, and we've got a deer trophy. Trophies will become important later on. For now... Let's just run through the forest a bit and see if we can find a nice structure to put to use. Well, actually, let's pull up the entire world map. Yeah, okay. See, this is the path we flew in on. So it's been exposed on our map, even though we haven't been there yet. Kind of neat. remember to jump it at least gives me something to do there we go here's a structure it's in pretty good shape all right so now let's have a look at the map so we use M to bring up the map key uh, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll to zoom in and out uh, these things here are different icons that you can place on the uh, uh, place on the map. So you select the icon you want, and then you double click where you want it to appear, and then you can give it a word here. Give it a annotation if you want. So just keep track of that for later, in case I decide to come back here. We can see there's something else up over here. So let's have a look at it. A lot of the structures contain chests where we might be able to pick up some free resources. Oh, speaking of free resources, hello bear. Not bear, boar. Oh, I just improved my punching skill because I didn't, <laughs> didn't have my axe in my hand. <laughs> I just want to kill you. There we go. And the other... Did the other boar flee? There was a second one up here. Shouldn't have fled. Oh, okay. Shouldn't have fled because I'm in ghost mode, so he doesn't really notice. Even when I kill... Anyway, he's not supposed to. Okay, we'll come back here. There, there are bees. You can see right there, there's that bee's nest back there. We'll eventually be able to use that to, uh, to get some bees uh, and... What do you call beehive for ourselves to, for honey collection? But we'll just leave it there for now. So let's go here because they can sting.
And they're not affected by ghost mode. They'll sting me even though I'm in ghost mode. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> Another beehive, it looks like. Yep, yeah, I can hear them already. See it right there. Let's run quickly in. I just want to see if there's a chest in here. No, there isn't. Let's get quickly out before they bite us again. Or sting us again. Okay, this over here is a grayling. I don't really want to kill him while he's on the slope. Okay, now he's off the slope. Let's bring out our axe. And they are like the feeblest of enemies. And they drop resin, and sometimes wood. Okay. Alright, with our stone axe, we can also chop down trees. Oh, there's another boar. Let's get him first. Okay, oh, there's some more berries that we can pick up. Oh, missed that one, but I'll get back to it in a moment. Okay, the only type of tree that we're able to chop down with our stone axe is... Well, not a birch, in fact. We want beech. There's the one. And we also want to be careful that we don't let the tree fall on us, since that could hurt quite a bit. Physics engine. Okay. A bit closer, maybe. So this is this big log here. So we have to break it in two. And then... Sometimes, if you're above or below things a bit, sometimes it's hard to hit them. Lots and lots of wood from that. <clears throat> Let's get a bit more from this guy. Okay. Let's go and find that one that was in pretty good shape. Since it's getting dark. Yeah, so right now if you look in the in the mini map on the upper right, it says meadows. Oh, this is not the same one I found before. That's another one. Oh no, it's the same one. Uh, it says meadows, so that's kind of similar to biomes in, say, Minecraft or something like that. And so there are different things that you can find in different biomes. Um, so the first thing I'm going to want to do here... I need to build myself a hammer. Hammer is the entry-level tool for everything else. And one of those in four. Okay, so with a hammer, I just pressed four to bring the hammer into my hand. And you can see over on the right, it tells me that I can place stuff. That's if I've got 
uh, something selected that I want to build with the uh, mouse button one, which is the leftmost button by default. Um, the rightmost button brings up a build menu and the middlemost button uh, can be used to remove things that you've built. And you get the resources back. Sometimes you get all of them. Some it depends on what it is. Sometimes you don't quite get all of them. So if I hit the rightmost button, that brings up a menu of things I can build. And what I want to build is a fire, a campfire. But I, before I do that, I want to get rid of that floorboard. If I select the hammer, that puts me in repair mode. Oh yeah, I need a crafting station before I can repair anything. Okay, so for now I'll just... Do I have enough to build a crafting station? Crafting... I do! Oh, wow, okay. Um, let's try and put it down here. There we go. So one of the things that's a little confusing about the UI... Oh. Hugan wants to talk again. Alright, Hugan, tell me about my workbench. You have built a workbench. The workbench allows you to craft complex items as well as giving you access to lots of more building pieces to construct with a hammer. Thanks, Bert. Thanks, Raven. So... If I click E on the workbench, you can see I get that same crafting interface that I had before when I was, uh, when I just used the tab key, but there's a lot more stuff on it. So let's come out of there and with, instead of clicking E on the workbench, I'm just going to click the tab key and you see there's many fewer things I can build. So the, this crafting area that you bring up, that you just get with the tab key, that's kind of like stuff that you can just build in your hand. You know, Minecraft, Minecraft equivalent is stuff you can build without a workbench. And when you have the workbench, then you can build lots of other stuff. Um, as you use tools, they get worn out a bit. You can see over here, my stone axe is uh, down to almost half. It's, you can see that under durability, it says 55 out of 100. So when I bring up this workbench interface, clicking here will repair an item. You don't get to choose which item. It'll just go through them one at a time. There, now my stone axe is repaired. And now my hammer is repaired. And it goes dark when there's nothing else to repair. Okay. So now that I have that, come back to this menu. And you can repair things for free. They don't require any resources. And the reason I'm repairing the floor before taking it up is that if they're in completely perfect condition, then that's when you get the most resources back from them. So now that it's repaired, I will use the middle mouse button to remove it and grab the wood from it. And now I can lay down. Where is it here? The campfire. And fire, the fuel that you put into the fires and torches and that lasts a pretty long time. So, so what happens here is you can see the little menu it brings up when I hover over the fire. It says E to use wood. So every time I click it, it'll put a wood in. Alternatively, if I want to be, like if I have different kinds of wood and I want to use one specific wood, then what I could do then is move that up into my hot bar and then press the... Uh, Press the hotkey, the number key for that hot bar slot, and then it'll only use that specific kind, kind of wood. Whoops. What I meant to do is take that back on my hot bar. Okay, so I'm nice and warm now. So what I'm going to do is repair a bunch of stuff since we're here. Go back into repair mode. This guy here. Yeah. 
And you need the workbench to repair things. To be able to repair things. And you notice there's uh, there's a hole at the uh, and up in this wall here at the top. That's not like that's something rotted away that's at each end. Uh, that's because you do need to vent out the smoke from your fires. Otherwise, they'll start choking you up. Okay, so the colors here uh, indicate how much support it has. So this blue here basically means it's right on the ground. It's full support. And then green means it's one level up. And I thought yellow was three, but maybe green is one or two. And Yeah, okay, yellow is the third one up. So I think green goes for one or two, I guess. I haven't played it enough to really have that down pat yet. Feel cool. Why did my fire go out? I threw a bunch of wood in there. Oh, I have to put the hammer away before I can interact with this guy. Why did I suddenly feel cold? Okay, that I don't get. I'm inside. I got a roof over my head. I'm right near a campfire. I shouldn't have gotten cold. One of life's little mysteries, I guess. Okay, that's all that. Okay. Oh, on the floor. There we go. Alright, so the next thing we can do is show how to build some actual stuff here. So we have these tabs at the top. This is doing right click with a hammer. Uh, so there's miscellaneous, which has uh, uh, the repair function off the hammer. Building campfire, which we've done. You can build a wood stack, but um, that's a like co nice compact way of storing 50 wood. And similarly, you can build a stone pile and a raft, which it'll be a while before we get to the raft. For crafting things, there's a cooking station, which we'll use in a bit, and a workbench. And then there are things you can do that, see these little stars up here? They improve the level of your workbench. So if we were to build these two improvements, then that would improve the level of the workbench, which would give us more things, unlock more uh, items that we can create. But at the moment, what I'm interested in is, I think it's 45, I think this is 40, that's, uh, I did not want 26, I wanted... I think this is 45 degree thatch up here. Looks like 45 degrees to me. Okay. So first rotate this thing around into the right direction. Come on. And boom. So it, it will, um, oh, what do you call it? Snap. It, there is snapping on this stuff. And you can see there, once I got it close, it snapped into the slot. Now I want it to be further up than that. There we go. Almost. So typically, you want to put your cursor on the edge of the thing you want to snap to. <clears throat> and there we go. Nice and secure there. Oh, the last thing we want to do is put a door on our little hovel here. 
So bring the hammer out again. Right click. Now this is just regular door. Yep. Okay. Do we want to open inward or outward? So I don't know which that was. Ah, outward. That was what I wanted. So that's good. That's almost morning. So I think that's enough for our first episode. Um, I'm going to try to keep these two half hour episodes. But if you've, uh, if you've watched any of my Terra Firma Craft episodes, you know that I rarely manage to actually keep it down to half hour. You have crafted a hammer. With this tool, you will raise mighty halls and towering fortifications. Start by building a workbench. Beat you to it, Hoogan. Beat you to it, you, you useless raven. All right, so we're going to call it uh, an episode there, and I hope to see you back for the next one. Bye.